Are you ready for tonight? I'm ready. I'm ready. Thank you. That was amazing worship. I prepared a message that I believe is from heaven. Look, I even got a little flower so you guys can receive the message. Um, but I'm going to do a disclaimer. I, as I was preparing, uh, you know, even yesterday, I had my, the message already in my heart. And, and I was super excited because if you know what is to prepare a message, you know, every week, it's like, okay, what am I going to say? You know, sometimes you sound like a broken record, right? But we need to learn the word of God. So I had a wonderful message, and I was super excited. And I, even my husband says, so do you have it ready? And I was like, I have it ready. It's ready to go. It's hot, and it's going to be good. Fire, right? <laughs> and so as I was writing the message this morning, it's like God would not allow me to start typing what I wanted to type. And then I started a conversation with him. It's like, what's up? You know, yesterday you told me this, and now it's like, I never told you that. You wanted to preach that. So the disclaimer that I want to say uh, or, or do is that what I'm going to speak, what I'm going to share with you, is it's a word from heaven. It's a word from heaven, and if it touches you, if it convicts you, I want you to know that I'm not thinking about anyone when I'm going to speak this. Because sometimes when you hear the message, people, if you're watching online, you're going to say, oh, that was for me. She's throwing it at me. No, actually, it's for me. I'm going to share, not, not from my heart, I'm going to share the word with the experience and what I have lived, and I know who God is. So I'm going to give you my first uh, scripture as I try to stay on time. Proverbs 4.23, go already there quickly, quickly, quickly. And it says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Another uh, version says, above all, keep your heart with all diligence. And the word heart right here, it means the seat of your, it's the soul, you know. It's, it literally means in Hebrew, the soul. And what's the soul? It's the seat of your affections, the seat of your emotions, so when we don't, am I? Keep going, keep going. Oh, okay. So. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Keep going. Just keep going. Oh, that, okay. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so that's the seed of your emotions. And so God is saying, are you guarding? Are you guarding your emotions? Are you guarding, are you guarding the affections? Because out of it is going to flow your life. And I know that we have a lot of people now, a lot of new people, and not a lot of people uh, know my background. So I'm going to give you just a little bit. So I'm going to speak with what God told me and where my seasons that I have been without being a Christian and with being a Christian. I know what it is to live in hell without God and I know to go through hell with him, which is a huge difference. I didn't grow up, I don't know if you noticed, Many of you guys don't notice, but I do have an accent. <laughs> Just in case, right? God has given you um, wonderful ears and you don't hear it. So when I started uh, following Jesus and he called me, he called me to preach. I was like, why wouldn't you call someone who knows how to speak the language, right? And it was funny because uh, as God took us, you know, around the world, uh, all the preaching was given to my husband, and he didn't even speak Spanish. And I was like, I should be taking those, and you should have called me to preach where I'm more comfortable. He said, I haven't called you to, to preach. And, and then when they asked me to preach finally in Mexico, I said no, because I forgot every word in Spanish. <laughs> so it was, I felt, nor from here, nor from there. Why am I saying this? Because I come... From uh, I come from a country what it is, it, I know what it is to live in a civil war. I know what it is to see your own people fighting your brothers and sisters. And it's painful. And sometimes you don't even know how you got there because you started with good intentions. You know, good intentions won't lead us to Jesus. Good intentions are not going to heal the nation. Good intentions are not going to heal my heart. I can have the best intentions, but it doesn't matter about the intentions of the heart. It matters about having Jesus in my heart. Yeah. 
So I grew up, there was more than 20 years of civil war. And I grew up not only seeing my family get killed, my friends, my neighbors. And you know, it started very with great ideas, great ideas. It started because we wanted justice for the poor. That our people wanted justice for the poor because th the social inequality was brutal. There was no, never has been a middle class. It was just the poor and the rich. And there was nothing in between. And I wasn't part of the rich, you know what I mean? So I grew up, I didn't grow up knowing God. I grew up in a household that I come from Mayans. My household, my great grandma was a pure Mayan. So we grew up with all of this and believing all these things. And, and so I didn't grow up, I, I didn't even understand when I heard Jesus, you know, because people would say Jesus, Jesus, a lot of, and I was like, but why did he die? I was so pissed. I cannot say it because we're, you know, we're pissed. It's not, it's not about word. It's just saying that you're very upset. And I was very upset. And I was like, why did he come? Why did he come? Why did he die? What did he do? And you know that no one can give me an answer. No one can give me an answer. And so I was a little girl and I had a lot of hatred towards this God that I heard. And I know that this God had a son. And little by little, they started saying, you know, you cannot, um, you cannot share your opinion. And, and then we needed to shut up. They silenced our people. And if you were to talk about the government, if you were to talk about a group of people, even if you were three years old, four years old, they would come to your school and they would ask you, like, what do you think about so-and-so? Why are your parents saying about this matter? And if you said about that matter, your family, your entire family was murdered. So I know what it is to have this ideal. And the ideal was beautiful. The ideal was that we would have equality. The ideal was like that we would be at peace. But it turned into a massacre. I've been in towns when I know the entire towns. More than, you know, El Salvador is one of the, it's the smallest country in the world. And one of the pack, it's packed with like people that, you know, like people to this day, I don't know why they think that Salvadorians are crazy. And it's true, people say that. And it's not true. It's that you don't know what it took just to survive. For you to be taking your own voice, for you not to say nothing. You couldn't say nothing. You could, didn't hear nothing. You didn't see nothing. Do you know when they put the people like that? It shuts your mouth. And they started with, I didn't even go to mass. But they said, you know what, we're not going to have mass because this, the Monsignor, the main person from the Catholic Church was speaking the real gospel. You know what happened to him? They killed him. And so you learn to shut up. You put up or you shut up. And we're living in times when I'm like, Jesus pays such a price for us to be free. And I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm not, gonna, I'm not speaking a political uh, message. I'm speaking a kingdom message. Because I knew that the ideal that they had was a slippery slope like that. You didn't even know when it happened to you. And all of a sudden, you know, they told you how to dress, what to say, how to say it. And if you are born in this country, this country is a broken country. You know why? Because people are broken everywhere in the world. But unless you haven't lived in another place, you don't know the freedom that we still have in this country. Yeah. You, you, won't even, you won't even appreciate. You won't value it. We said that we value. You know what? I was, I was here, and I was uh, 
practicing, not practicing, but we were checking my mic. I started reading on it because I didn't, I, I'd run out of words. And I was like, hey, I'm going to read our values of the church. And all of a sudden, I go, we value life. That's one of our values as a church. And not because elevate values life, it's because God values life. And it says, everyone matters. So I'm going to say once, blacks' lives matter. And when I say blacks' lives matter, I'm not talking about the organization. I'm talking about the human being. Do not confuse an organization with the people. We blame the church because we think the church is an organization. You know, right now, God, I feel like I feel I, I want to cry, and I, I want to cry because I can feel how God feels and how he feels about us being so divided because we have equated the church with an organization. We're not an organization. We do, do we have boards and everything? Yes, but we're an organism. We're part of a body. We're a body of Christ, and if you're a nose as a church, so what do we get to do? We get to breathe. You clean your nose hairs. You get a piercing if you like it, right? You get your boogers out because we're a body. Other people are a hand. You know, they cannot put piercing in their fingers. So we have, we're boxing the church. We're blaming the church. And you know what? At the end of the day, you are the church. I am the church. And, and I'm like, I am thankful. I know that this country and the whole world is criticizing America. You know, I have chosen to bless America. I'm going to bless America. I can go political. I've been political in my past life and before Jesus. I was bitter. Do you understand? I was a bitter woman. I was, I hated God. My husband and I, we met because, you know, our common denominator was, I mean, of course, he's fine looking and everything, but, <laughs> you know, you have to, you know, like the guy, and I was love his voice and everything, right? <laughs> And I was like, he's so handsome. And you're like, but you know what put us together? Is because he was an atheist and I hated God. That was her common denominator. I'm like, perfect. He hates God. I mean, he doesn't believe there is a God and I hate him. What a perfect combination. And you know that even when you hate God, he values your life and he puts a price on your value. You say, what are your values? You can say, I value it. Life matters. If, if we even have a scripture, Ephesians 5.1. But right now, is we're choosing just an organization. I choose black people yeah. because they're humans. Yeah. I choose white people. Why? Because they're human. I choose Asians because they're human. I choose Hispanics or Latino because they're human. Yeah. Yeah. I know I'm a little bit intense. You need to, do you need me to dance? <laughs> So I told God, God reminded me, why did you hate me so much? Remember when you hate me? And, and he says it's so wonderful. He doesn't bring shame. I'm going to tell you that shame is never going to transform anyone. Yeah. You shame me, the more I'm going to be stubborn. I, God reminded me that I hate it. I hated anything that represented God and Jesus because his representatives we're doing such a bad job. I didn't know about a God. I didn't have a Bible. I didn't know about Jesus. And whoever I met, it was just judgmental. I remember one time when my husband and I, we visited a church. And, he's, you know, he was, he was, would you believe it that he was softer than me? He's a softy. Deep down, he's a softy. And I'm that person that, mm, that could carry a lot inside. But I remember one time he said, this is years before even Alexis was born. I was like, he's like, you know, we should just 
try something, you know, because I was always praying to the universe, you know. I, I have actually run from, I believe that I have run from my calling because I grew up in the occult because that's what I, w I was brought up. You know, people came and, and my grandma would do his thing and her thing and I would be reading the hands. Because the enemy comes to twist everything good that we have been called to do. And I allowed, but I didn't know, but I, mind you, out of the 20-something years, I lived during a civil war for 16 years I, until I arrived here. And I thought, when I arrived in America, all my problems, all my hang-ups, all my hatred is going to be gone. But you know what I realized? That I brought myself. I was like, what happened to the land of milk and honey? It's pretty bitter. And I can go, I'm not going to compare pain right now because sometimes we want to compare our pains, our traumas. And no, pain is pain, trauma is trauma, bitterness is bitterness, unforgiveness is unforgiveness. So I was very unforgiving. You know, when we, I gave my life to Christ, I couldn't even read the Old Testament because I was mad because I was like, I don't understand. I don't understand. This is, you want a, a violence? Read it here. Make movies out of this. And I was like, but why does it say that? I couldn't understand because if you don't have the love of Jesus Christ, you won't understand the word. And I had all these questions. And I would be like, where were you? Where were you when my brother died? All I did for the first three years of me being saved was highlight the Bible, give it to my husband, and believe that he was going to change. I would read the Bible like, oh, this is good for him. <laughs> and it's a true story, right? Because we didn't have enough money, we had to share the same Bible. And I'm like, oh, this is so good. He needs this. I... For three years, I don't think I read the Bible for me. But you know what? The Bible is alive. So I'm thinking, I'm checking, and then he will read it. Because my time was in the morning, his time was in the, you know, because he worked long hours. And his time was in the evening, and he would read it. And I'm like, what did you get? I, um, he didn't get nothing that I highlighted. <laughs> nothing. I'm like, this man has no understanding of the word. <laughs> You know what? Because you're not going to understand the word. You're not going to understand the love of Jesus unless you really learn to forgive. This is a good message. And for many years, you know, I waited for the people. And I'm going to tell you that I come from a lot of layers and layers of pain. It, in the natural, I have every right not to forgive every right if i'm gonna live a carnal life if i'm gonna live according to the world not according to the word i have every right to hate it hate the world but if i see my life through the eyes of jesus and through the word of god and filter my life through it i have no nothing to say because our god is a forgiving god for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? And we quote that, and he's not here condemning the world. He's still, he's still on a saving mode. That means he's not condemning us, but we, each other, are condemning each other. It's like we have, like I said, like autoimmune. We're attacking each other. At this point, I don't know who, who's the church and who's the world. But I also have compassion because I have been bitter in my life. Also have compassion on the people because I know what it is not to be able to see it because you have so much. And I'm waiting for that person to come and ask me for forgiveness. Well, I'm going to be like my husband said, you're going to be in that stoplight forever. And even in times, and I'm not talking 23 years ago, I'm talking even now. Like I want this person to come and say, forgive me, Virginia, because I hurt you. Then I have to go back to the word, right? Where does it say that someone's going to come to you? You actually have to go to them and ask for forgiveness. The word of God is inver inverted. 
And, you know, I can talk here and everybody's talking politics and everything and, you know, the governor and you know what? The governor is the governor and the world is going to do what the world's going to do. But me as a Christian, me as a follower of Jesus Christ, I need to be wise. I can't. People are saying the church is crying because, you know, like, you know, the church, you know, we can worship at home. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question and you don't have to answer me. Have you been worshiping at home? No, like worshiping. I'm not, I'm not saying like in the morning, well, praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Praise your Father. And then you go on Facebook and you're pissed off about it. Like, man, look at this. People are like, that's not worship. That's not worship. We're, we're lying to ourselves. We're in self. We're denying our freedom. You know what happened years ago? They said, we're going to take prayer out of schools. So and we're like, well, you know what? It's okay. Even you come out of my mouth. And a few, if I go back to my first preachings 10 years ago, it's okay. They, they took prayer away because you know what? I'm going to pray from home. Yeah, but corporate prayer is powerful. Yeah. We're two or more are gathered together and we're in the same mind and same accord. Miracles happen. Yeah. Miracles happen. So, no, you know what? The devil is not going to silence me. I already lived through that silence. Yeah. And whether you agree or not, that's up to you. Go back to the word. So now we're saying, you know what? We should worship at home. If you're home, I'm, I'm, to, I'm, I'm not speaking. I'm not judging. I'm just saying, like, there is power when we come to worship. So all of a sudden, it's going to be like a slippery slope. Okay, like, okay, they took out worship. You know, it's okay. I'm going to worship at home. Do you take 20 minutes, 30 minutes and really worship God? And worship means surrender. And he's looking for worshipers in spirit and in truth. And let me give you another scripture. God left you, you and I, as agents of change. So 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 20 says, now all things are of God. Before that, I encourage you to read it all, all the whole entire chapter. And it says that we are new creation. It says that we don't see others in the flesh. Like when Jesus came, we saw him in the flesh, but we realized that he is a Messiah. So I need to see him as a Messiah, as my Savior. And he says, now we don't consider men in the flesh. He says, we consider him as our savior. And from now on, we are new creations. We, in new creations, we, it doesn't mean he's going to repair me. He's going to fix me. No, he's going to restore me. That means he's going to make me new. So are we either being restored or you're repairing your own self? And I want to tell you that doesn't work. I tried it. Try to fix my own self. And I have found myself in times as a pastor being mad at God. So I can't be being like, oh, my God, he's mad at God. She's mad at God. No, I've been there too. Hey, i done it. Guilty as church. So I can't be doing that. But let me read this scripture. It says, now all things are of God. Because you know he's going to make everything work out for our own good if you believe it. He says, who has reconciled us to, through himself, through Christ, through Jesus Christ. And he has given us, what, he has, what is it that he has given us? He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. You are a minister of reconciliation. That's not just for pastors. He's not talking uh, Right here, Paul is not talking to a pastor. This is not a letter to the pastor. This is a letter to be read to the church. So you are a minister of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling what? The church? The world. The world, the world is like clapping right now. The devil's like, oh my God, this is awesome. I don't even need to do nothing. I don't need to even, the pressures on them, they put pressure on each other. The pressure is going to break us. To himself, he says, not imputing. Another translation says, entrusted. 
not imputing their trespasses. That means that he's not counting. You know how man, we, we sin all the time. If you say, you know, praise God, I'm a, I'm a saint of Jesus and I don't sin anymore. <laughs> you're deceived. <laughs> just by saying that, you just lie and you just sin. <laughs> but the beauty of it is that daily, our salvation is daily and we go to God and we repent. Yeah. And you know what? He's like, okay, done deal. But we are the ones who don't forget it. He erased it. He's like, you know what? You're covered by my son's blood. And we're like, Lord, remember what they did to me. Because I have done it. So that's what I'm saying. It. And he says, he is not imputing their trespasses to them. Right now, God is not keeping tally. He said, he has committed to who? To the pastor? To us, to you and me. He has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are what? Ambassadors for Christ. It means we represent him. How are you representing God today? Really? I had to make that, I had to ask that question for myself. How am I representing God? Am I going crazy? Am I become a judgmental person? It says, uh, through God, we're pleading through us. That's who we represent. He's pleading. He's saying, you know what? I'm pleading through us to implore you in Christ. On behalf, be reconciled to God. But I'm going to tell you, reconciliation doesn't just happen to happen. There's no way that we can reconcile people if I don't have even reconciled my own past. There's no way I can reconcile others if I can't even forgive my own self, if, if I feel full of shame, if, if I can't forgive the people that hurt me. There is no way that I'm going to reconcile people to God. You and I have been called to be agents of change. And you exist, and you, God didn't make a mistake that we are alive in this time. You know, I used to think, God, I wanted to, I always said it, I wanted to be alive when Jesus was walking on the earth. It would have been so awesome. That's what I used to think. You know, but God makes no mistakes, and he knows the timing that you are going to be born. He knows that you were born for such a time as this. So if you're alive and breathing, you are the minister of reconciliation. But it has to start with me. I have to reconcile myself. Think about accounting. You know, you can start entering everything, but every year needs to be reconciled. And to you and I, every year, we need to reconcile ourselves. Every year, I need to see, like, how is my heart doing? Am I keeping my heart really above all things? Am I keeping it according to the word or am I keeping it according to my pain? And, you know, I'm one of those people that have said, you know what? Yeah, the church has hurt me. I think I went crazy a few years. And I said, the people, the church has hurt me. You know, God is so amazing and so full of grace. He, he let you talk your stupidity. And I'm talking to myself, right? He said, no, the church, it's not the church. It's people. People who just happen to represent a God. That is full of mercy, full of love. And in, in Galatians 5, 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Do you know that? For freedom, another translation says, For freedom you have been set free. For freedom. And it says, And do not be entangled again. Because you know what? He set us free, so you're free. Who entangles, you know, uh, and you could be in a place that you're stuck, you can't move, you're bitter, you're, you hate the world, there's so many injustices done to you, and you can be mad because I've been there mad, and I want somebody to come and, can, and save me and tell me that, you know, it's going to be okay. You know what God told me? You're waiting for me, and I already came, and I already did it. Now you have, I have the responsibility not to entangle myself again in the yoke of slavery. Yeah. You know, now people are telling us what to think, how to think, what to say. And if I don't agree with you, then you know what? You're not, you're not with me. 
Is that the word? Even Jesus gives us a free will and says, you know what? I'm offering this to you. I'm giving you life and death. This is what happens if you choose me. This is what happens if you choose death, which means destruction. If you choose your own way, you choose. You get to choose. I'm not going to make you because I gave you a free will. And now we're trying to tell people how to think. I'm going to be telling people, this is what I want you to think. If you're not, then you're not for me. I'm like, and I go back to the word. Remember when, when Joshua was about to go uh, walk around Jericho seven times and he was like, that's why I love the word of God. You need to read the word of God because I love it because he was very, very worried the night before. He was like, he couldn't like sleep. And I picture him not sleeping and he's in the desert, right? Because everything is desert. And he was like, walking around and he didn't know what to do but God already gave him direction but he, you know you know like you want signs from heaven right but mind you in those times we didn't have the Holy Ghost so God will show up for you now we have the Holy Ghost we have the Holy Spirit on this earth but he was like oh what do I do and he's he's on the floor and 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 then an angel shows up and then and then Joshua says are you for me or, or for my enemies neither he said I'm here for the Lord of hosts. I'm here to represent my God. I'm just coming to tell you something. I'm not here allying. I'm not, I'm, I'm not an ally and not a, I'm not an ally here. Ally, I, and that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing right now. The church is doing right now. And it hurts me. You know, it hurts me because I have done it myself. And I'm like, my God, Lord, we, we, we lost our first love. We have allowed, we have entangled ourselves with the affairs of this life. I'm not saying if God has called you to do something, do it with him. Because a good idea, if it's not a God idea and you're not anointed for it, he hasn't called you for it, you are going to finish bitter. You're going to finish hating Hating the one who set you free, being mad at God, being mad at the church, being mad. And that hurts me because we are the church. I don't represent Elevate Church. I just happened, my husband and I just happened to pastor a church, Elevate Church. But I'm representing a kingdom. I'm representing a God who loves. I'm representing a God who wants re to reconcile. Right now, we are living in times that we, this is our moment, church. This is our moment that we can reconcile our brothers and our sisters, but it has to start with me. I even told the Lord, Father, forgive me. Forgive me if I have caused anyone pain. Forgive me. Forgive me if I have taken sides. Forgive me for not understanding. Forgive me for allowing my trauma, my pain, and everything to shape me. No, God is going to use everything. Everything, a bit of your pain, then you use it, Lord. I surrender my will. You know, years ago, and I'm going to give you my last scripture. No, that's, that's going to be your homework. But I want you to read John 8. When he's talking about, we're talking about uh, Jesus came to this earth. And he proves, it, it, it proves that he was here not to condemn anyone. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to tell you the story. Jesus is, is you know, the Religious people are always going to come and test. Let's see how they respond, right? Because if we are hurting, I'm not going to respond. I'm going to react. And I'm going to put all of my pain and all of my hurt, and I'm going to project it on you. Because it's easy to put it on you so I don't have to deal with my heart. The Bible didn't say, keep your brother's heart above all. Guard your brother's heart. He says, above all, guard your own heart because your life depends on it. But Jesus is in this, in this story. And this woman committed, she was caught committing adultery. In those times, it's still in the Middle East. If you do that, you're still being stoned. You will be stoned. I'm not talking about, you know what I mean? Oh, my God, it does exist, you know. People do do it. And Jesus, and, and he says that religious people came, be, and he says, if you read it, it says because they wanted to test them. You can put the scripture so they can read it. But then guess what? Jesus says that he was like that. He was just chilling, you know. He's, that's what we should be doing, chilling. Things are happening. I'm like, you know what? 
I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm just, I'm just representing my father. He said that he didn't say anything unless the father told him. Jesus. So he was just scribbling, scrabbling, you know. I don't know. He was, I'm sure he was such an artist, you know. And so the people are coming because this woman was caught on the act. And I was like, wow, people were like, they did have nothing to do that they went to check out this girl. Because it says she was caught in the act. And it was like, it was a crowd. They didn't have nothing to do, but they wanted to judge everyone. And so he, and they, they come and he says, okay, they're, they're testing. He says that they're testing Jesus. He says, look, this woman was caught during adultery. What do you say? Do we stone her? And everybody was ready. That's why I put your rock. Get your rock if you, if you like, want to touch it or not touch it. We sanctified it anyways. And then he said, if you, if you have never committed a sin, be the first one to throw it. If you've never been bitter, if you've never been bitter, unforgive, you know, being unforgiving, having doubt, hatred, you want to throw your first stone. You know what the body is doing right now? We're bruising each other. That's what we're doing. Grab, grab your, this is what we're doing right now. It, 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 I got this little stone, but we're, we're talking about like, if you see, I, I seen a movie and it's, it, there were stones, big stones, and they will throw it until she will die. And then Jesus said, you know what? I don't condemn you. Where are all the people that were accusing you? And you have to go back to your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus can ask you, who is the one? Who's criticizing you? Who, who's condemning you? You need to know that you know that you know that you have a personal relationship with it. Because if not, we're going to be swayed back and forth, back and forth. It's just, and the Lord said, you know what? I do not condemn you. But he says, you can go and sin no more. And sometimes, this is, this is our heart, right? This is, I, I represent this in our heart, right? And look how beautiful it looks. I even got a flower. It's fake, but it looks good, right? Sometimes we, we, know, we know how to be. We have learned how to act like Christians. Because we can put up an act. But you know what? God knows the heart. He says he weights the hearts. He knows. He knows everything. He knows the intentions of my heart. And you know what? And he looks good. But if I remove this, I'm going to tell you that I have allowed even in recent years, I have allowed, you know, a lot of unforgiveness in my heart. I even told one day, I even told the Lord, you know what? I, I want to be a civilian. Isn't that crazy talk? I want to be a civilian. Because people put this whole thing on, you know, and I'm talking just personally me. In my heart, the more you keep things in your heart that they shouldn't be there, the more I, I let betrayals come in. I let unforgiveness. I let bitterness. And all these things were filling my heart. But we want to reflect God. There is no way that we're going to reflect God. This is the time that do you see in your life, do people see Jesus in you? And it's not because you look angelic. But do they see the good in you? Do you see the good in people? Are we extending grace? Are we extending mercy? Are we worshiping? Are we praying? You know what? No one ever, because I come from that. When someone said, you know what? No, we're not going to say this. We're not going to say that. And all of it, we just love it. Okay, that's good. That's good. You know what? No, I refuse to do that. And you can judge me, but I know that God is not judging me. No, I'm going to stand and no one ever is going to shut my mouth. And I'm talking about my own pain. My own pain is not going to shut my mouth. I'm not going to bow to my own self. And I'm going to allow God to heal me. I'm going to forgive. And forgiveness is a process. Every morning I have to forgive a list of people. Because in the flesh I want, I want payback. I'm just being honest. You know, we don't talk about this. These are the talks that we should be having. Let's be real. Where am I in the world? Where is my heart? Have I kept my heart pure? Please, 
If you're one of those people like blaming the church, the church did this, the church, okay, then forgive us. Forgive us. But go back to yourself and say, how am I doing as a church? How am I doing as an ambassador? Can my, can my neighbors, can my family see a, different in me, a difference in me? Do I really look like Jesus? Do I really reflect them? You know, we're here to honor people in, people in government. No, but we have decided who are we going to pray for. You, are, you have decided to put another rock in there. I even heard somebody said, you know, the governor is a demon, you know, like, boy, well, he doesn't have Jesus, you know what I mean? Like, who am I to judge him? I can pray for him. I can pray for him. You know what? I'm going to do what the word of God says because I represent a heaven and a kingdom. Then you know what, Father God, instead of me allowing and being bitter to, you know, with this person, with this person and the, the Democratic Party, you know what? I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to pray for every person that is hurting right now. Our black brothers are hurting. We should be praying for them. Let's just pray for them. Pray that, Father, let me be a vessel. Let me represent you. I don't care what other people are saying, but let me represent you well so they can see you in their pain. And you got your rock not just to get it. I want you to stand up, actually. And I'm going to be the first one. I, I believe that God is calling us to humble ourselves. You want us to heal our land. Our land doesn't mean our nation. Our land means this is my land. My family is my land. And sometimes we don't see breakthrough. We don't see healing. It's not because God hasn't done it. It's because I refuse to relinquish my will. But then I want other people to follow me and follow you to do what I want. No, no, no. We're wrong. So I'm going to be the first one. Instead of throwing stones and judging and doing all this and just like stop and let God rest upon your heart. I might be the first one to put my stone down. And I'm asking you to check your heart. And if you have been holding something against your brother and sister, the church or something, put your rock down. This is your moment. I want you to do it. If God is speaking you, to you and this message touched you, I want you to put your rock down. And you know what? Well, God will tell us, I forgive you and sin no more. Stop entangling yourself in the affairs of this life. Yes. Father, we just thank you that there is a an anointing on us putting our rocks down and there's an anointing like you said in Luke chapter 4 to heal the broken hearted to set the captives free to set at liberty the oppressed I thank you that's your heart your heart is to see those people healed just as much as you want our heart healed and so, Father, we just thank you for a special anointing upon our life as we put our rocks down, that now we can have open hearts and we can look up and see all those that are hurting, Father. Yes, Lord. Our black communities, our Asian community, our Hispanic community, the white community, all communities, Father. We just thank you that, that we never forget that when we, when we leave this earth, Every, na every nation, every race, every culture, every creed will be worshiping together. So let that be the spirit of our heart now. Yes. Unify our hearts. Give us wisdom on how to, how to be a voice and not be silent either. I refuse to be silent. But I refuse to do it without you, God. In the name of Jesus. In that same attitude, every eye closed, every head bowed. If you've never invited Jesus Christ into your heart, I want to give you that opportunity, whether you're watching online or here. If you would like to receive Christ, like for real, <laughs> I'm not inviting you to religion. 
I'm inviting you to a personal relationship with God. If you've never done that before, when I count of three, you'll just put your hand up and you put it right back down. Every eye close, every head bow, please. I want this moment to be private. And so at the count of three, if you're here and you're saying, I want, I want, I want to know the real Jesus. I want to know him personally, intimately. Ready? One, two, three. If that's you, put your hand up high and then put it back down quickly. Quickly. I saw that. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Awesome. If you did this online as well and you lifted your hand, pray this with me. Uh, pray, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins, every one of them. Today, it's a brand new day. I receive new life in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for not giving up on me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Man, that is awesome. What a word in season, huh? Wow. That was a great word. Make sure you pick up your rock and throw it in the trash. No, just kidding. We'll, we'll put them away for you. Don't do it. Don't, yeah, you can leave the rocks. We're going to actually probably put them back for any other illustrations. I didn't even receive tithes and offerings. Let's bless God's house. Come on, if, if, if this house blesses you, for those of you that are guests, I'm not talking to you, but you know what? We're very big on outreach, local outreach, global outreach. We're givers. We're generous. And so if you want to text to give, you can text to that number right there. You just text EC Give to 77977. There's a church app. There's envelopes. There's generosity boxes if you're watching online. You know, let's just bring our tithes and our offering. Let's just thank God for what he does in the house. And, uh, and for those of you that are first-time guests, uh, please make sure that you text uh, first to the number that should be back on the screen any minute. Um, and if you just, you know, take a picture of that and let us connect with you. But thank you so much for being here tonight. You can put the other one back again. Thanks, because I know uh, those watching online. Hey, and just don't forget, this coming Sunday is the grand finale of Orphan Heart. Have you guys been enjoying that series? Man, let me tell you something. Lives are being changed like crazy. And I'm dealing with my heart right now as I speak as well. And so um, let's keep being the church. Amen. Invite someone to church. RZP for Sunday, because... Um, you have to, but we got three services to choose from, 8 o'clock, 9.45, and 11.30. So you have three services, hour, 10 minutes, boom, we get, we get in and out. It's fast, but it's still a great experience. God bless you guys. I think that's it, right? Did I forget anything else, guys? That's it? Okay. We love you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, sweet sleep. Amen. Bye-bye.